Hi, uh, early good afternoon, Sunday to everyone. I'm Alex. Um, so today I'm sharing you my first landed webinar, sharing with you on the market of the landed market trends, the market sentiment, and some um, good property to share with you. So let's give me let's give you some introduction on myself first. Allow me to uh, introduce myself. I'm Alex from Pronex. I'm also one of the landed trainer in Pronex, helping agents to understand more about landed marketing and also transaction. I have more than 13 years of experience as a real estate agent. My focus lies on selling landed property, mainly focusing in 14, 15, 16, which is the East Coast area. So we do have an East Coast plan. So disclaimer. While every reasonable cause is taken to ensure the accuracy of the information print or present here, no responsibility can be accepted for any loss or inconvenience caused by any error or omission. The idea, suggestion, general principle, example, or other information present here are for reference and education purpose only. This presentation is not in any way intended to provide investment advice or recommendation to buy, sell, or lease property or any form of property investment Presenter, which is me, should not be liable for any loss or expenses whatsoever relating to investment decision made by the audience. Okay, so today's agenda will be um, sharing with you more on the landed market trends. Uh, should we buy now or wait? What is our alternative options? And uh, I will be giving you some property tours, virtual tour, and later on will be Q&A. So, this is a graph showing you the Singapore landed transaction since 2014 to 2021. It's an eight-year transaction. As you can see, the last highest transaction will be in the 2017. So today, <clears throat> based on 2021, we are at the end of October now. So it's already at the transaction unit around 2009. So based on the movement, or probability on, on the transaction from year start to now is already 2009. So very likely we will cross the 3000 mark. So landed, um, landed basically we have um, very high demand uh, based on the current market as we many, I would say many homeowners now require more space. So some say because we're from home, uh, so not in our space. So that's why I upgrade. Or because maybe no holiday, so they have no more budget to buy a house. <laughs> no, like, anyway, just joking. Lah. So I would say that landed, landed prices have been uh, undervalued because it's a very niche market. Singapore, there is only 70,000 odd of landed property of a population near to 6 million. So um, basing on the, 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 the percentages, that means we are only seeing like approximately 1% is landed property. So if also think about it, if let's say foreigner will be able to buy a landed property, so what would be the price that we will be looking based on today's market? Because for lender itself, we own the land. <clears throat> we also own, own the build-up. And if we do a, a, a nice comparison based on a, a having a four-bedroom landed, also a four-bedroom condo, the space could be even as big as we double up in sense of the space that we have. So... Next, also, it will be a legacy that we can pass down to our next generation, to the children, where prices, I would say, based on the, the, the property market. So as long as we got holding power, chances of the property prices going uptrend is definitely there. So it, this also will help their next generation or younger generation to own a landed property for today. Because land property, always we see more onto potential upside. But I just have to share, lah, if we based on investment, normally for landed property, the rental youth will not be as good. Say maybe now if you buy even a 3 million plus minus two story in the terraces, rental maybe will only be around 4,000. So it will be only the 1%-ish there about uh, rental youth that we'll be expecting for, for landed. But the appreciation... Um, just to share, uh, some of the some of my buyers or they have bought houses uh, from me last end of last year or even starting of the year, some have already appreciated like almost twenty percent. So we can see that, um, especially the car based on the current lender market itself, there isn't too much supply. 
That is why we have very high demand. Next, I would like to share with you based on the Eastern landed transaction because as, as me, I am mainly focusing in the Eastern area, so I would like to share more about the Eastern area. So if you base on the Eastern area, based on the graph itself, same today market is basing on the highest transaction uh, for 2021. Now it's at 671, basing on all type of uh, land property from terraces all the way to detached. So basing on these three districts, now we're already hitting 671. <clears throat> Very likely, we will also be crossing the 700 mark um, by the end of the year, um, based on you see the, the rate that the current market is moving. So, it's also the second highest transaction basically in Singapore. Of course, the highest transaction is always in the District 19 because one District 19, we do have a little bit more uh, cluster of uh, landed property. Um, East, we do have um, quite good numbers of, of uh, landed property also. Why also why in, in, in sense that the East Coast area do give us a, a better demand? So East Coast, we have our East Coast Park, uh, Lifestyle. Uh, it's a nice good district. There are also upcoming the Eastern Thompson Line that convenience the, the landed owners in future. We have plenty of good food in the East. So people always, when you come to the East itself, you'll remember that we have plenty of good food in the east area so i would say uh, some of the owner also tell me once they stay east they will always stay east so so it, it, I, it maybe it's a so-called like a momentum thing where owner where they sell their east they would like to move back to the east or find something back in the east itself um okay we are also seeing that the newer development nowadays also increase by quite a bit <clears throat> for the east area i I understand there is a uh, inter terrace that already transacted a brand new inter terrace already transacted more than three thousand per square feet, and there are also nine cluster nice nice clusters of, of ninety nine lease a uh, ninety nine lease whole uh, area in the east like Eastwood, uh, the Q Heights which is uh, the elevator ground which I recently sold one unit there, and the Turnamera Kachir. So these are the very nice cluster sense of 99 at least <clears throat> for uh, comparable to certain area we are not mixed where you are sitting together with all the freeholds etc so it's a nice cluster sitting together it's easier also to make comparison in sense of their pricing okay next i would like to share with you basing on the terrace transaction in the eastern landed so, basing on uh, 2021, uh, we have an average of uh, 1495, that means it's almost like 1005 per square feet, um, basing on the terraces. Terraces means the inter terrace and corner terrace. Uh, so, it will be uh, categorized under the terraces segment. So, we are almost hitting the 400 mark already. So, definitely we will cross that range. And if you know for inter terraces, it's the entry level where we always have a um, much higher demand because normally for new condos, I, I would say condos or HDB upgraders, when they are looking into landed itself, terraces usually will be the more selected choices uh, because it will be the next jump where they wanted a bit more space. So we are looking into the terraces. So some terraces, especially now, if you base on the general market in the east, <clears throat> the newer one are easily asking between 4.5 to 5 million for even in the terraces. I okay, I would say um, some may feel that wow, now inter terraces brand new, we have to buy at that range of price already. But do remember, developer when they buy the land, they are also buying basing on a higher pricing. So when they they and also nowadays the development causes have also increased quite a bit. So after after I mean I would say that developer when they do a a, a gauging in sense of the pricing pricing that they want to put up in the market, they also need to be reasonable. But of course, they are also seeing that prices itself, when they purchase at a higher price plus the development cost, there will also be a, some leeway for their profit in order to bench in at this uh, asking price. But buying a brand new one, at the very least, you do not need to consider too much on how you how you want to re readjust on your personal preference. Because uh, honestly, today, if we want to buy some uh, original inter-terraces, 
everywhere I would say we will have to pay maybe approximately at the 2.8 to 3 million mark. And for inter terraces, easily we should be building up to around 4,000 to 5,000 square feet. So, basing on the current market causes of uh, reconstruction or rebuild causes is approximately 300 per square feet. So, if we are basing even for based on 4,000 4, per square, uh, 4, square feet times 300 per square feet, it will be already, already 1, 1.2 million or even higher. And you might need to wait for one and a half years to two years in order to in order for the house to be ready for your own use. <clears throat> so that's why um, I would say based on the current developer asking price is still reasonable. Um, of course, the newer condos are getting smaller. So the space that we, that we have for condo comparable to landed, landed definitely still give us a good space. And also do remember today, if you buy a condo, I would say as long as it's not too far away from MRT, even we based on the city fringe area, mm, the to buy a four bedroom, maybe around thousand three square feet. So thousand three square feet, you will be easily paying maybe around three million. So that's why landed there are still good demand. Of course, let's say for example, we don't see based on a full newer build, we buy, we buy a two story terrace. <clears throat> maybe we will buy something that is it fall be around the three to three point five million range after renovation, maybe at four million there about. But the space that you have compared to even a new development is still much better. So that is why I would say for lender itself there are still very good demands. <clears throat> so next I would like to also give you this comparison of the terraces and other type of lender in the east. So as mentioned Terrace always will be the entry level. So that's why we always have a greater audience to buy terraces. That's why you can see in sense of the transaction uh, uh, for inter terraces is um, for inter terraces and the other type of um, landed property, we stand almost at around 60%. 60% there about of transaction is terraces, the 40% will be the other type, where it's, as mentioned, is the entry level. So the, that's why when you have more demand, the price growth will, for terraces will also higher. That's why you can see over the one year, averaging have been also growth around 20%. For other type will be approximately 8% there about. So I would say, you see, when terraces, that is where some of them, they sell off their inter terraces, they upgrade to, to bigger house like semi-D or detached. So same goes to the condo. When previously they buy a lower price, they get group profit. So they do an upgrading. That also push the general market in order to move because everyone is looking to upgrade their property. Okay, next I would like to share with you some transaction <clears throat> in the eastern area so this few property basically have already transact more than 2000 per square feet so as you can see number one like saraya these are the resale uh, this is not the brand new one so we can see even as high as number three faldi road with a land size of 1519 already transact at 4 million with a PSF transaction of 2634. Okay, but of course, mainly for this uh, few uh, terraces houses that were transacted in the east are majority three-story. There are, there are two other two-story which I will elaborate a little bit more. So when you have three-story majority, meaning, meaning that you will have at least four bedroom or more. Because, okay, houses, in order to have four bedroom minimum, we will have to look into at least two-story or three-story. Two-story, maybe we have three bedroom on the second level, <clears throat> one granny room downstairs. When we have the four, uh, our, when we have the three story, very likely will be two on the second level, two on the third level. Maybe we have one granny room downstairs. <clears throat> so these are the type of terraces that give you a better demand. But of course, when it comes to land, we also based on locality, the house configuration, position, etc. I will elaborate a little bit more on all this uh, when we come to the selection and uh, landed differences. <clears throat> So these two is the two-story terraces that have really transacted above 2,000 per square feet. One is at Chuchet Terrace, but of course, um, these two, these pictures are, I, I, I brought it out, sorry, this, these two pictures, I brought it out from the Google map. <clears throat> I would say that the two unit owner have also done it, uh, done quite tasteful renovation to it. 
but it's still a two-story house. Um, for a two-story house transacted above 2,000 per square feet, <coughs> it's another market trend already, where at the, at the end of the day, like for example, Trisha Terrace, they sold at 4 million. But this moving condition, the house is really nice. The Lansard Road, uh, the land is around 1,008 plus, it's sold at 3.8. So it's also crossed nearer to the, the 4 million range. So you see, when developers, when they come in to buy houses like that, how much are they paying? That is why you can see that the current market prices for lender pricing is slightly increasing. So how do we justify um, landed property value? Of course, number one, <clears throat> this is uh, a straightforward thing, the locality. Then we see the position of the house, the, the facade, the surrounding, is it sitting on the elevation? Because well, especially when it comes to blended, uh, we don't just basing on nearer to MRT. We also really see based on the position of a house. For example, um, Onan Road, if you all happen to know where is Onan Road. So one side will be nearer to the Paya Leba side. The other side will be nearer to the East Coast side. The Paya Leba side, if we base on the average market that uh, it goes, uh, having the same house, same land size, same condition, houses that is slightly nearer to the East Coast may be, uh, may be easily like 200 per square feet higher towards the Paya Leba side. No doubt Paya Leba side is nearer to the MRT. But if we base on the facade, the surrounding, um, for Paya Leba side will be slightly a bit more congested. There are more cars coming in and out. And uh, basing on that area is uh, one-way traffic down to the Paya Leba area. And we also have uh, small hotels. We also have some coffee shops and maybe warehouse. So the environment may not be as serene. The environment may not be as prestige compared to the other side of the the Onan Road. <clears throat> the other side of the Onan Road, another plus point is because they are 1km to Taunan and also short walk to East Coast Road where you have more, you have good rows of uh, food paradise over the area. And based also based on now, we based on there are upcoming MRTs that give you even more potential. And if you based on the environment, if you happen to know that area well, you can, you do understand the surrounding facade that make the property um, in sense of a better value. <clears throat> then, of course, the land size and the shape. Because land size, bigger land no normally will give you smaller PSF. Then when smaller land, it will usually give you higher PSF. That's one thing. Secondly, we also based on the land shape and also the size. Uh, the land shape, um, it depends on the configuration because when under the BCA regulation, in order to build a house, we need to follow the guideline of the land shape. For example, in the terrace, we only need uh, 7.5 in front. We need a 2 meter setback and back. So the site will follow the land shape in order to build it out. So if your land is not, not rectangular or not squarish, which is more on the triangle or irregular shape, the, the building, the, that means your bedrooms and even your configuration of the house will also be irregular. So all these make a difference, especially houses that is a bigger one where the corner terrace or the semi D, where you still need the two meter setback at the site. So at the end of the day, um, when the entire configuration does, does build, so like, okay, give you an example. We have a wider frontage, a smaller, smaller back of the house, <clears throat> a more triangular land. So the rooms that was built for this triangular land with a smaller frontage at the back, this, those rooms at the back will be much smaller and it will be maybe to the rectangular shape because we will cater basing on the setbacks of the uh, land in order to cater for, for the maximize to, to, to cater for the build up of the house. So this make a difference when you have uh, irregular land. So the, the way how you build it or even the way how you design the configuration, it also be tougher. That's why when it comes to houses that is irregular or bigger land, uh, the PSF will be much lower. Because when it comes to landed, quantum level also make a difference. Where you cross a certain level, sometimes it also be tougher to, to be accept or be, you know, to be digest. Then, of course, the number of story, uh, as mentioned, because nowadays um, construction fee is getting higher. So from a two-story, in order to go up to a three-story, maybe we have to easily spend 
from 600 to even 800,000 because um, for two story, unlikely we can do an A and A. A and A means additional and alteration. Additional alteration, normally we will keep the structure and we do a certain extension and not more than 50% of the existing GFA. So usually for a two story, when we do an A and A, likely we will e either extend to the back or extend to the front. Likely, unlikely, la, I won't say no. Uh, it depends on how good the builder asks. They can give you good suggestion. I ever heard that they also push up another level. But normally from a two-story to push up a, uh, to a three-story, we need to do a reconstruction. That means it's not a full rebuild. We were still basing on the SDC structure in order to add on more GFA. So these are the additional causes that we see. That's why when this house is existing already a three-story house, the building definitely still have value. Doesn't mean the house is very run down. The house is um, very original, means that the, the building itself no value. So a, a single story, two story, three story do have uh, their existing range of value. Because when from a single story house, you want to build to a sto second story house, the cost will also be quite high. So just to share, lah, because there are some um, um, consumer may that, that you may not understand that even the house is run down, even it's a two-story house, there are still good, I mean, still um, substantial building value for the house as there are different type of uh, buyers looking for different type of houses. A two-story house for certain buyers, they also might be suitable. It's just that they need to do major, reno major renovation to their need. Then, of course, the last, uh, not the last, but the fifth is the facing. Uh, of course, ma majority, they prefer the north-south facing. Or sometimes we face a park. Or sometimes we're sitting on the elevated ground. We can overlook the entire uh, scenery or the entire uh, estate. These are also houses that give you a better value. Then also, <clears throat> the layout and configuration of a unit. It depends because sometimes structure-wise or layout-wise, having certain structure in between the, the rooms in order to cater for individual need may be also tougher. So all this really make a difference in sense to, to justify a landed property value. Okay, so is bank value or indicative value accurate? This is, um, I would okay. say... It's called Save Mart, Super Value Mart on 8 up I would say for the bank valuation, I wouldn't say that it's not accurate, but there are too many things that we need to gauge, especially when we come to the bank value. Because, okay, for bank, usually they will come in and gauge based on the surrounding past sector prices. They will also do a comparison. They will also maybe take into consideration that it's a two-story or three-story house and also how intensive uh, the renovation that was done for the property but then they don't take into consideration for example with based on the negative part maybe the house is next to a power station uh, next to some religious um, building where you know religious building maybe will give you some inconvenience in sense of parking in sense of noises in sense of smell so these are things that maybe the bank valuation will not take into consideration so also, uh, as mentioned earlier, the facing that we see, what type of uh, surrounding that we have uh, sitting on an elevated ground. So this, the bank valuation may not also indicate in sense of this property value. That's why I, I would say that for landed property, having a two to 300k uh, valuation up or down is pretty common. So it really depends on the consumer feel that how match this property. Of course, we come in with an indication in order to share based on the transacted, the, also the bank valuation, plus also uh, the buyer feeling how comfortable they are to the property itself. So next, <clears throat> should we buy now or should we wait to buy a landed property? I would say, okay, demand and supply, at this um, upgraders, we buy, we sell high, we buy high. That is always the market trends. So, for those that know property on hand, you are you are current. You are maybe you already sold your property uh, years back. So, are you renting? Is it worth for you to keep continuing renting, or we should just buy a property that you like, that you will suit your family need. I think for Singapore property, it's just a matter of time. It will still appreciate. It's about holding power. It's about um, the affordability. So, 
should should we buy now or we unless you are buying more for investment maybe you feel that or based on the current market may not be uh, suitable to entry but i would say that based on the current market based on the recent few uol just purchased a, a piece of land for redevelopment at 1007 over per square feet so based on even the supply because you see very simple if market do changes the owner will sell their house and when it comes to landed houses is every individual house have their own characteristic doesn't mean that now you see this house and the neighbor is selling the neighbor house may be suitable for you so looking for a landed house um, i would say is also not a easy task that we cannot just suka suka buy one this is not possible because we need to really, really comply into to the individual liking. But then, if you are seriously looking to buy a landed property, basing on the current property market where we have lesser supply, I will suggest to prioritize on what you need. Of course, buyer want to buy low, seller want to sell high. But we, we in order to understand or basing on this current market to know what you should purchase. I think prioritizing what you need is important. Is the location the number one priority for you or the layout or the number of rooms, etc. So buyer, if you are looking to buy a landed house, I would suggest to prioritize the first one, two on what you want. Certain things is not trying to compromise, but certain things I think maybe renovation can help in order to do certain readjustment or maybe um, by traveling a little bit longer may comply to give you a better, uh, nicer uh, living, living uh, expectation. So, if you also based on the current market, lah, if let's say a landed owner having a three-story house and they want to downgrade it to a two-story, after selling and then next day buy, what is the profit that they are getting? So does that make sense for them to do that? Unless owner is downgrading to a HTB. But when they are from a lender from a lender property owner downgrading to a HTB, we get good profit. But when it comes to the HTB itself, you do know that the appreciation will be slightly lower. It's not that they won't, but they will be slightly lower. So it does that make sense for them to do that? So that is what I only see that if only the lender owners wanted to downgrade to a HTB, then they see good profit, then they might sell. You know, so these are the the range that I feel basing on the current market how it work. So, what is our options available? Will you consider ninety nine, or you will consider a custom house? I will give you and I will let me let you understand a little bit more even onto the ninety nine leasehold and also the cluster housing market so you can seriously consider if you're looking for a landed and you find that the the freehold houses are a bit too high these are the two other options that you can consider <clears throat> so is it worth buying a 99 leasehold landed property i would say there's no reason why you shouldn't go ahead if you love the house even is 99 leasehold um, personally, I feel leasehold landed property pricing may not move as fast as the freehold. But when surrounding prices went up, they will also appreciate gradually. The only thing where, okay, for leasehold, because when year go by, the lease will get slightly lesser. But then do remember, when come to a landed house or I would say a condo upgrader, now you're holding a 99 leasehold. So you are selling uh, maybe 10, 15 years house. So later on down the road, the lease will also drop when you buy a freehold. I'm sorry, when you buy a leasehold 99 house. But then when you jump from straight from a condo to even a 99 leasehold, the, the space that you get is easily doubled and you are owning that piece of land, no doubt it's 99. So 99, I would say, is still a good option to consider. Uh, in average, I would say in the entire Singapore, the leasehold, we still have remaining around 70 over years. So it will still be a good range of lease for the next two generations. Um, we have not come to the 50 years, 40 year mark. This is uh, something that we cannot gauge or we cannot uh, judge if the property range of price coming into this range. But if we do also a comparison, HDB, we see some old development uh, that only have a remaining of 50 over years. If we base on the market itself over the last transacted comparable to today, the price is still increasing. 
So I basing on the niche market, especially when it comes to landed, I don't see why even leasehold property is also appreciating. This is the one thing that um, I, I, I do, I, honestly speaking, over my seven, eight years in landed itself, um, cluster house have never, have never really key into my mind until basing on the recent transaction. And I, I've, I managed to feel and, or managed to see a couple of uh, cluster houses that really give you very good configuration. So cluster houses basically is a selection between a landed or a condo. Or we can say you can have the best of both worlds. Because you have a landed space, yet you have facility. So also under why now cluster house is definitely a good uh, choice to select. Number one, as mentioned, is the space. Number two, under the URA new guidelines. So chances of we seeing more cluster house to be built will be lesser. Later on, I'll share with you on the community open space on the URA guidelines. So uh, this is also a more affordable uh, living environment next to a condo and you can see it's just nice in between the range of the condo prices and also the landed prices. So it will be a little bit more affordable, I mean it's definitely more affordable compared to the, the current landed pricing. And also, yeah, as, yeah, as mentioned, lesser, lesser possibility of Castle House new development in the future. That also will see, give you a little bit more um, property in sense of the, the cluster houses prices appreciation that we see in the near future. Castle housing, um, okay, one, one, one maybe few things that some of them they were concerned is, wow, cluster housing, the maintenance is like $600 to $700 per month. So, okay, but the thing is, if we base on the current condo, if you're owning a four-bedroom, what would be your maintenance fee? $400, $500, or those that with um, private leave, you could be six seven hundred. But then, do think back, uh, HDB itself, if you have, you pay a uh, conservancy fee, $70, $80 per month. Open car park or multi-story car park, plus the car park season parking, you easily have to pay almost $200. So we upgrade to condo. Condo, you pay $300, $400, or even $500. You enjoy the facility. You enjoy the free parking. You enjoy with security. Then we move up to the cluster house. With another two more hundred, you... You own because for cluster house usually will be a lower lower density development, so you have lesser residents, resi, res, uh, lesser residents to share the facility. So you pay slightly a bit more plus. Do remember the space that you have is maybe double based on the condo that you have. So you pay that by a little bit more. You enjoy all this because. When it comes to, okay, also sometimes we will also gauge, wow, cluster house we have to pay, but we buy a landed house, we no need to pay. But do remember, uh, landed, there are many unforeseen, um, um, I would say, uh, repairs, unforeseen um, maintenance that you see. For example, gardening, maybe one month you got to easily spend 100, 200, or maybe you need to cater for pest control. Maybe um, after five to seven years, you need to do a full repaint. With, because for full repaint, scaffolding is the one that costs you more. So maybe for a full repaint, internally, externally, 15000 What if the roofing got leakage? You change the entire roofing, maybe twenty over 1000 So these are many unforeseen cases or, or we'll say uh, expenses for landed that we don't see. No doubt we don't pay the monthly maintenance. But if once for Custom House, you pay the monthly maintenance, you do enjoy the facility. And you can easily park two cars, two sheltered cars. So these are... One, some good plus point for cluster housing uh, to consider. If let's say you feel that the landed prices is too high, this is the next segment that you can seriously consider. Okay, the, this is what I, will, I have shared with you saying that um, the URA have revised the guideline uh, with a maximum houses of a cluster housing development. So previously it was 30%. This 30%, they can use it to do greenery, facility, now they increase to 45%. That means chances of you owning that piece of land, the amount of building that you can build for that piece of land will be much lesser. So when you are building much lesser, the developer also take into consideration, if I build lesser unit, that means every unit I need to sell higher. So do they be able to sell the cluster house at that range? So majority, if developer were to take all this into consideration, very likely they will not choose to build a cluster house. Maybe they will take into consideration to build development like uh, apartments or condo, or they will, if let's say the dimension of the land does allow, 
they will prefer to go into um, pure landed houses that will give them a better returns or give them a better so-called demand in sense of the market. So this is uh, some sharing basing on the property uh, trends on, on what we have the, in general basing on the lender segment, then we move into the 99 and also cluster house. So these are the few selections that if you are now in the midst of a puzzle that you want to upgrade. So what is my options? So having your options availability also, number one, we cater what is your budget. Number two, then what is your, your requirement or need basing on your full family uh, need? I mean, in sense of the lifestyle and uh, space and also number of bedrooms. So these are a few selections that I think we can, we can seriously consider because every individual type of lender, no doubt is the 99 or even the cluster, does still give you good appreciation. I think most modern thing it fit into your current daily lifestyle. So this is something important that you can take note. Um, if you have any more questions that you want to find out, you can always uh, ping me. Uh, I will try to assist as much as I could. So next, I would like to share with you some um, property tour that I can give you some good understanding of, uh, I would say, the cluster housing's configuration. So this is... Um, this is the so-called layout for Caladio, the one that I'm marketing in Tolokurau. The price starting off is 3.08. Freehold, um, size is around 3,001. I would say the configuration is quite good. We have five bedroom ensuite, total five story, which is the basement that part two cars, all the way three and a half story. So let me give you the property tour walkthrough now. Okay, so <clears throat> this is on the ground floor of uh, the development. You can see the space. If I do not mem remember wrongly, the space is 7.8 times 4.7 meter. So in generally, the space is still quite good. You can see that we have um, a eight-seater table that is uh, putting at this corner. So in fact, I see other unit um, which the owner, other owners, uh, they also cater like a, a dry kitchen. Uh, at the back of the dining area because in the in between uh, even coming from the center of the living hall we still have quite good space we can we can push back the, the the dining area a little bit to the center we can add another wet kitchen if you like so we can do more preparation or we can do even baking in the in the dry kitchen area so um, the the living space is also quite huge we can now now it's a three seater plus a single sofa we can fit in the five-seater one, not a problem. Space, the distance um, to the television is still reasonable. That means at least, uh, because some of the, you know, uh, some of the condo, because of the, the width, or I would say the distance from the sofa to the television, uh, we cannot buy big TV. That means the, we can only buy the 15-inch type. But at the very least, for this, the distance is still good. We can buy the 17-inch if you want, the 18-inch if you want. At least not too bad. Lah. Then the side way where you can see the walkable area from like, okay, behind will be the kitchen to the stairways area. These are also area we can do a little bit more display cabinet. So because the space that we have is there, is this comparable to the normal terraces wise is almost equivalent. So I won't say that if, even for this cluster house itself, the, the usable space compared to a Terrace wise, we have to compromise a lot, not really. So it's quite uh, reasonable. Maybe for the kitchen, uh, let's take a look at the kitchen. Maybe for the kitchen area, um, compared to a normal lander, it could be slightly smaller. But I think it's still reasonable as, as uh, because this the way how this uh, kitchen was built is more squarish. They also built this uh, folding um, preparation table here where if we want to do more preparation, at least we have more space. At least having two person inside, one helping up, one cooking, the, the maneuver space is still okay. And one thing is, normally when it comes to landed, you have to use Selena Gas. For Cluster House, because it's a newer development, when they built, they changed the so-called the gas system, where now for this, we can use city gas. So we don't need to order and wait for 30 minutes for the gas person to come in. So while you are cooking halfway, especially where you are 
brewing soup. <laughs> so um, at the back, there is also a nice window that gives you nice ventilation. So if you do major cooking, at least we can open up the windows to have some ventilation. So next, um, let's move back to the living hall. Okay, so the living hall space is there. Uh, we have good natural lights from both sides. Even from the stairways itself, there are some windows in the midway that give you nice, uh, nice uh, light, natural skylight from... Yeah, you can see that we have some nice natural skylight. But of course, the other side, uh, we close down the window, uh, the curtain. If you open the window, we also have a very good, nice uh, natural light there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't show you, but um, there is also a nice uh, small patio area that we can do some plant plants if you want. We can also play some outdoor furnitures if you want. So th they, we have a lift. This lift access straight to the five story. So it will bring us down to the basement, uh, the basement that we can park two cars all the way up to the attic. So maybe let me show you the second level. Okay, so here we are on the second level. On the second level, we have two bedroom, the master junior and also a common room. All the five bedroom come with attached toilet. Now. So maybe I'll share with you the common room first. <laughs> okay, this is the common room. So you can see queen size bed, not a problem. Side tables, the space that we have still reasonable, walkable area. So if let's say we want, we can place a side table uh, or a study table at the side of the, the nearer to the window. And we also have a two-door wardrobe and you have the, our very own attached bathroom. So I think this should be the estimated size for the current condom master bedroom. Queen size bed, you know, still have nice maneuver area. So you can see, uh, yeah, then you can see the, the attached toilet. Quite nice decorate. La. This is uh, approximately four years development. Um, total of 14 exclusive unit. Uh, we only remaining three unit. Um, rental is good. Okay, one thing for Cluster House, the rental youth is not too bad. Um, we're asking based on three odd million, the rental is 6,000. So it's almost like 2% 2, 2 plus minus. So I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty reasonable for, for lender houses. So then let, let's move to the Master Junior. Okay, Master Junior size is good, uh, you can see. King size bed, the wardrobe is at the side. Both sides, we still have good space. We can add on a study table if you want. In front, we have easily another meter gap. So if you find that the wardrobe is not sufficient, um, we can add on more and we can even place like a TV console, small TV console in front in order to cater your need. So the side and also the other side, we have um, nice light ventilation. This will also come with our attached toilet. So the thing is, you see, when it come to um, cluster houses, some they will feel that hey, cluster houses the space like, like not too big. You see the master bedroom, you also come with a bath and also a stand shower. So a lot of people will have a wrong perspective, um, feeling that you know landed houses or cluster houses may not. Or I would say the cluster houses may not give you the as much space as like a, a terraces. But I think it's pretty reasonable, especially for condo upgraders. You want pure four bedrooms or you want four bedroom plus entertainment room, this is definitely a good suggestion. So that is the uh, the leaf, leaf uh, lobby area the, or the leaf assessing area is tucked at one corner. So let's move up to the third level. Okay, so on the third level, this is same, the common room. Uh, currently, they're putting in a super single, same. We can put in a queen size bed if you need. Space is good. Um, real, you see, for a family of three, um, three kids, this is easily we can fit in. Definitely not a problem. So we can cater to individual need, and you have facility for them to enjoy. Then let's move to the master bedroom. Okay, you see the master bedroom, uh, the king, this is also a king size bed. This will give you even more space. Um, we have a small walk-in area with a so-called like a four-door wardrobe. Then you can see beside the tables itself, we can add in a dressing table. Of course, of course, we can add in also cabinet. We can also add in study table. Um, this room size uh, compared to terraces uh, is not small. Uh, um, 
I would say this is quite a common um, master bedroom size, even for uh, terraces, houses, or even you know other type of um, houses. You can see the space that we have is there. Uh, they also give you good natural light. So why this is why I feel that eh, cluster also not a bad option. Eh? Plus, if you base on something new, having this sort of configuration, the contemporary side, Basing on a cluster house compared to a terrace, you might need to pay another 1.5 million. That means another 50% more in order to own a, a freehold landed uh, terraces. So why not by you know um, using or consider to buy a, a cluster houses and you have other options that you can use another name in order to consider to buy other development as an as a investment. So we can have you know both um, both property working hard for you. So this is another consideration that we can we can we can consider lah. Huh? Then let's move up to the roof terrace. Dang dang dang. Okay, roof terrace. Uh, currently they use this as an entertainment room. So if you find the four rooms are sufficient, we can use this as a karaoke room, uh, entertainment room, a study room. Or if you need this as a room, we can still fit in the super singer. Not a problem. The space is there. This is also come with attached toilet. The best part for this house is uh, we have a uh, outdoor patio. So the outdoor patio <coughs> will be a nice place. It will be a nice place for you know nighttime. We sit down, relax with the family, or we can do barbecue in this area. So you also overlook the entire Tolokurau landed enclave area. So Caridio uh, is a nice development where it's within 1km to 4 school, which is the, one of the fourth uh, good school in the East area, which is Tao Nan, CHIJ Katong, St. Stephen's and Ni An. And there are also upcoming MRT, which is the, upper, uh, um, the, Thompson, East, the Eastern Thompson line. Uh, we are more nearer to the Marine, Marine Drive or Marine Parade uh, MRT station and we have a park connector all the way to the end of the road where we, if you like to cycle we can cycle all the way straight down to the east coast area and also we have a nice park if you have a dog with you it will be a nice area for you to walk around it's a nice um, environment and uh, we have a lot of uh, lifestyles that is why the eastern area do have a very good demand in 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 the entire singapore so this is the entire outlook for this development um yeah and this is the layout very nice okay so let's move to the next uh development this is the a nice, nice development where I think everyone is talking about it. Belgravia Ace. So this will be launching, I heard, will be somewhere in January 2022. A uh, super, super big piece of land. Um, if you like it, uh, we now we have only limited information in terms of the configuration, even the pricing. Uh, I will not be able to relieve too much at this moment because the uh, details is not out yet. But if you do really like this development, uh, do give me a ping. I will keep you up. You, uh, give me a call. Give me a, a, a WhatsApp. I will give you more information once I have uh, gotten from the developer. So these are some information that I would like to share with you. Um, a total of 107 unit um, of 104 semi Ds and 3, three terraces. It's a freehold strata landed. Uh, sitting on a super big land, 226 two square meter, which also work out to be 320 square feet. It's super big. Uh, if you based on comparison, 3, 320 square feet by dividing on the 107 unit, that means each is like sharing a land of like 3,000 square feet. It's like super big. It's located in D28, the Amokyo site. It is also surrounded by the landed enclave and it was, it's developed by this. Um, renowned developer Tiong Eng Group with good quality, full leaf all the way from the uh, attic to the kapak. So 
uh, they enjoy the, the facility, I think, based on the previous development that they have built, uh, facilities is nice. I think likely we might also have one to two pool, um, gym, etc. etc. So uh, also easily will be parking two cars each to a development. So it's a nice development that you are you can consider if you are still looking to buy something brand new, uh, upcoming development. So this is, and okay, when it comes to cluster houses, for a development where you see 107 unit, because usually when, especially no matter what type of uh, development itself, when you have more unit, you have more transaction, that will also slowly weigh up the transaction pricing. Okay, next, I would like to share with you another corner terrace in Kebangan. It's a very nice uh, corner terrace that was um, in Lolo Malayu. Give me a minute. I'll... The land size is uh, 2325 with a build of 4000. This is a 3.5 corner terrace. Um, locality is at Lolo Malayu. Um, very convenient as uh, it's short walking distance to the MRT. It's only like maybe seven minutes walk to MRT. Um, it's sitting on a very nice locality where the site is a park connector. So very good um, south wind that coming from the side of the house. Nicely contemporarily built with five bedrooms. Let me show you a little bit more on the configuration of the house. Was uh, This house was fully rebuilt around 2014, so it's only a seven, eight year house. But I would say the owner have really well maintained. That's why you can see the front side. Uh, we have no much of blockage because the site is, is like a park connector. So in front, we can park two cars and the house, you can see that is very proper and, and nicely putting in nice quality of, of, the, of tiles and, and even the windows. Look at the surrounding. Where can we find a house that we have um, almost 75 degrees, no blockage? Because majority, especially when it comes to the terraces, houses are, is majority you have the front back terraces. So you always have block behind and in front. So finding, that's why I say when it comes to a house that is uh, sitting on a good position, sitting on, on a nice nice facade, does also give you a good value. So look at the, the Ho and Das living hall. We have a nice kitchen, nice, nice dining area at the back. Uh, that would be our kitchen. So this is the dining area, also the dry dry, dry kitchen area with island. So those that really like island uh, will be superb. So behind will be our kitchen area. And another store. Then we have a wet kitchen at the backyard. Next, right, you can see that we have really, really plenty of uh, natural light that come in from all sides. Okay, let's move up to the second level. So second level, we have three bedrooms. So this is one of the bedrooms. This uh, is shed bathroom. We call it the Jack. Sorry, ah, wait, ah, let me double confirm. Okay, this is no, this is the Master Junior. They come with a attached bathroom and even the bathroom, you can see that they give you very good natural skylight here. Then we have another two more room that is a sharing bathroom. We call it the Jack and Joe. Wait, ah. Go wrong way. <laughs> so this is uh, two rooms that share the common toilet. Uh, common toilet, not common toilet lah. But we call it the Jack and Joe lah. That means two room will be using the same toilet, coming with two doors. It's quite nice of a uh, configuration and uh, contemporary design.
Okay, next, let's move up to the third level. Third level will be the entire level for a master bedroom. So uh, this will be our walk-in wardrobe. Our walk-in area followed by our bedroom. Nice, right? You see the, the unblockage view. So this is a very nice house that was built sitting of a, a, a very good position. So this entire level will be the master bedroom and we have another an, an attic. So let me let us move out to the attic. Okay, this is the attic bathroom. So we have another bedroom here, which is the attic room. So we can use this as like a Master Junior or we can use this as an entertainment room. So see, sitting on a house like that, at least it's a, it's a home that you want to stay at home. So at, in night time, family can come up to the attic area, enjoy the scenery. And because we are not too far also from the Lingkong Tiga amenities area, it's just a short walk that you can go to a 24 hours uh, NTUC. We have a nearby coffee shop, near but not too near. Uh, we also have a provision shop. So uh, if we walk over to the, the Tenggong, Lengong Tiga site, it will be fully shuttered all the way to the MRT. Okay, so initially I wanted to share with you another nice corner terrace, but unfortunately the owner tell me the house just sold yesterday. So well, if not, that one is a nine bedroom house that I wanted to like share with you all. I, I was so anxious to share with you all based on that house, but unfortunately... No more. So I just want to check um, that will come to my end of this webinar. Um, do you have any question for me? So I would like to assist anyone. Do you have any question? All right. If no question, then thank you for everyone. I hope to see you again. I'm trying to do a more webinar um, every, every once a month in order to share more on the market trends and also sharing with you what are some good buys in there in the market in order to let you finding some good unit, finding a good home for yourself. So I'm Alex and I hope to see you soon.